starting from transfer pricing. Now, transfer pricing has been a big challenge for students uh, in the recent attempts, and uh, they do face a lot more problems than transfer pricing. So let's understand why the problem arises in transfer pricing. Transfer pricing is basically a revenue per unit for the supplying division and cost per unit for the receiving division. <clears throat> I'll explain you this later on. Transfer price basically is a price uh, using which the two divisions are trading with each other. In fact, it's a price uh, on the basis of which division A and division B of a same company are trading with each other. So this is a transfer price rule. So transfer price is very simple in terms of the concept building is concerned. So let me quickly give you a recap of that. <clears throat> For example, uh, there, there is a company in which uh, there are two divisions. One is division A and second is division B. Okay. One is division A and second is division B. So uh, division A is basically a one uh, that uh, makes for example uh, let me give you an example like this is a pen okay now division a uh, basically makes the uh, caps of the pen and uh, b makes the remaining part of the pen and uh, a delivers the cap to b and then b completes the pen and sell in the market so these are the same divisions these are the two divisions of the same company and uh, uh, one division is making a cap of the market and second division is basically completing the market and selling in the market. So, for example, uh, A produces the cap and that cap uh, is of $5. The variable cost is $5. Uh, and uh, for example, this is just to give you an example. And if A sells uh, the cap to B, for dollar five so <clears throat> this selling price will be the transfer price because it is selling uh, at dollar five and this is the price which is basically a revenue for the seller but this will be the cost for the buyer so as a is selling caps to b so for a five is the selling price uh, whereas for b five is the cost okay now for example if a transfers this to b at dollar five and uh, b receives this at dollar five so for a the price is five and for b the cost is five now uh, for example b uh, is selling uh, this for dollar seven in the market and uh, uh, the profit that B is getting is 2 and the profit that A is getting is 0. Remember both are profit centers. Now A is also a profit center and B is also a profit center. So the profit at the end of the day that A will have will be nothing and the profit that B will have will be 5. Sorry, 2. Now uh, comes the group. So if you just uh, observe here that uh, these are the different divisions of the same company. So uh, for group perspective or from group perspective, if we consider it, so uh, what would be the financial results? Now, if you all remember uh, the basic concept that you've covered in paper F3, that at the time of consolidation, uh, intra-company transactions are canceled out. So from group perspective, if you consider here, uh, Division 1 selling to Division 2 uh, is not a genuine sales. From group perspective, this is intra-company transactions and should be cancelled out. Which means uh, the revenue of A and the uh, cost of B will be cancelled out because this is a transfer price. So at group level, uh, the intra-company transactions should be cancelled out because uh, from group perspective, dealing of the two division is not a business. So uh, if we just work out the profits for the group, so the revenue will be seven and the genuine cost will be five. So from group perspective, you have to consider the genuine cost here and that will be five uh, for the group and the profit of the group is two. 
Now, for example, for example, you can see the results. Uh, I have cancelled out intra-company transactions at the time of consolidation, which means at the time of group calculation. Uh, but at the individual division level, you have to uh, consider these transfer prices. Now, for example, if we observe uh, that the profit that the group earned uh, is because of A or B, so if we just look here, as division B earned a profit of two and this is the profit that group earned, whereas the profit of division A is zero. This means uh, the group might award bonus to uh, division B and the bonus will be given to division B because division B uh, earned profit of two, which gave the profit to the uh, group as well. But as far as the A is concerned, it did not earn any profit and will not get any bonus. And such a thing can demotivate such a thing can demotivate uh, division uh, A here because such a demotivation uh, can affect the business performance. So it is very important to consider uh, this type of a situation. So if you look here, A is getting no bonus and the entire bonus is given to B and both are profit centers and both objective is to earn profits. So this will motivate uh, division B but will demotivate division uh, A and what you expect division uh, A would do in the coming uh, month or in the coming year. So definitely we can predict here that in the coming uh, uh, month or the year, uh, the division A will not sell at five. And for example, if A increases uh, the transfer price, that is the selling price and now sells at seven, so the cost for B will also change and will go at seven. So if you just observe the change here, that a change in transfer price is affecting the individual uh, divisions profit. And you can see the profit for division A now will be two, whereas the profit for division B will now be zero. So this is the impact of a transfer price that an increase in transfer price uh, will improve the revenue and the profits of the seller because A is the seller here, uh, whereas uh, it will uh, increase the cost of the buyer and hence the profit of the buyer will be affected. It is important that the transfer price should be one that encourages goal congruence which means the individual divisions profits should be in line with the company's objectives. Number two, a transfer price should be a one that encourages performance measurement. Now what is performance measurement? A transfer price should be a one that results in fair performance measurement. Should be a one that results in fair performance measurement. Each the division should get a fair profit. And third objective of transfer price is to ensure autonomy. Now what is autonomy? What is autonomy? Autonomy means the individual division manager should have the right to set their own transfer prices to set their own transfer prices without the intervention of head office. This is autonomy. Now, those who missed this uh, example, let me just repeat it for you again. As I showed you before uh, that uh, the groups was getting the profit of two. Now, the bonus was given to division A and was not given to division B. Now, for example, uh, I'm just repeating again. For example, if the uh, seller now changes the transfer price to seven. So the cost for the buyer will also be seven. Now the profit of seller will be two, whereas the profit of buyer will be zero. So at group level, if you look here, the group revenues will still be seven because in terms of consolidation, we cancel out the intercompany transactions the internal sales and the internal cost and the real cost is five and the group profits are two. Okay. 
now if you observe here <laughs> division a got the profit of 2 because of which the group got the profit of 2 whereas division b profit this time was 0 so if we just connect the bonuses with the profit this time a will be given the bonus and b will not be given the bonus the bonus will be given to a and will not be given to b because the profits have been earned by a and not by b so by these two examples it is quite clear that a change in transfer price will affect the individual divisions a change in transfer price will affect the individual divisions profitability and if it is not a fair transfer price as i mentioned before it should be fair if it is not fair it will result in a conflict first a was getting the a was not getting the bonus now b is not getting the bonus so this can result in a serious conflict get my point but one point to observe here is whatever the transfer price was either it is five or seven the group profits remain unchanged and this is the point that you need to remember that group profits remain unchanged whatever the transfer price was so individual profits will be affected but group profits will remain same whatever the transfer price is so the only threat is though group profits remain unchanged but if individual divisions fight with each other and stop doing business with each other and start doing business with external companies then then the group profit will also get affected so to avoid this it is important to set a fair transfer price as i mentioned here the objective of the transfer price is to ensure goal congruence performance measurement and autonomy 